I'm Peaky and this is Pav and in today's video we're going to be looking at the big Brazilian names that swapped elite level football for the high wages of the Chinese Super League. Pav, look, so just before we jump into it today, uh, let's just touch on how the Chinese Super League are able to make mm. these huge sign-ins uh, and also pay these ridiculous mm. amount of wages. Yeah, so Pika, the Chinese Super League actually operates outside of UEFA, so they're not really governed by the financial fair play rules such as, you know, clubs from uh, England and Europe are. Right. Um, another point is that, you know, the Chinese president, he's got massive plans to boost the Chinese economy and football's a big part of that. So much so that I know he's made football compulsory in the schools in yep, China yes, as well. Yeah. Um, and he also wants China to host a future World Cup. So let's not expect uh, the Chinese Super League revolution to die down anytime soon. Absolutely, man. And we're going to be covering seven big Brazilian signings that made the switch. And ultimately, we're going to give him a thumbs up or a thumbs down as to whether that transfer was the right move. So, uh, Peaky, should we roll into it? Let's jump into it. Let's go. Okay, so Peaky, let's start with uh, one of the big name signings that English fans are going to be familiar with, uh, Paulinho of Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. Uh, before we just roll into kind of the whole move and whether it was a success or not, let's just go into kind of how the whole deal went out yeah. and what, what you got up to over there. Go for it. Uh, so the fee was 17 million went from Spurs to Guangzhou Evergrande. Um, and at the time it was to play under Luis Felipe Scolari, so obviously a bit of a Brazilian connection there. Um, spent three seasons there, 97 appearances, 28 goals. He actually got picked up by Barcelona in 2017. Um, signed for 40 million at the time, it was quite a big deal because you know, going from Barcelona going picking up a player from the Chinese okay, Super, Super League, League. It's, it's, a bit, <laughs> it's a bit out of nowhere, isn't it? Um, but you know what, Piki, he's, he's really successful over there. Um, had, had a great season, won the domestic double, and off the back of it, he actually got into the Brazilian World Cup team in 2018 due to due to the performances. Um, strangely enough, though, uh, Guangzhou Evergrande actually re-signed Pauli, and that's where he currently is now. So. Um, yeah, kind of went out, did a stint at Barca, won the big trophies he wanted, and then maybe came back to China to kind of top up on his bank account. Yeah, I think so. You know, look, uh, you asked the question there of like, you know, do you think it was the right move? And, you know, as a personal uh, kind of thing for Paulinho, I think it worked out for him quite nicely. Mm. You know, for whatever reason, it didn't work for him at Tottenham. And when they signed him, uh, he had, you know, quite a lot of rave reviews. People, he Tottenham fans. He was hyped about, man. Tottenham fans were excited about, yeah. to see him, right? And yeah, uh, a couple, I remember a couple of good games where he thought, you know what, Spurs have got a player here. You know what? But then and that just, was just yeah. them inconsistencies. Yeah. You know, and his performance crept in. And I think, you know, that's where he kind of just kind of got brushed aside. Mm. So I think he had to look for a move away. Um, people asked the question as well, you know, would Barcelona have potentially come in for him if he stayed at Tottenham? Mm. I don't think they would have because I don't think we would have seen the level of performances. Mm. Um, maybe the Premier League didn't suit him. Maybe it was too fast pay for him, too physical for him. Mm. Um, the move to China obviously looked to uh, look like it kind of helped him out, I think. Mm. And, you know, from there, he probably got some consistency into his game. Barca probably saw him performing yeah. as an outstanding performer out there in, a say, a weaker league, if you like. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I think, look, from a personal level, I think the move definitely did him good. And he yeah. won some silverware off the back of Absolutely. it as well. Absolutely. End of the day, he won major trophies out of it. And like you said, if he stayed at Spurs, I don't think he would have reached that level. No, I think he would have I struggled. I think the Premier League was definitely maybe a bit too high paced for him. And, you know, obviously going to a, a league like China, you know, you, you're going to be able to, it's going to be easier to score goals, get assist, assists and, you know, get noticed a bit more on, you know, on the highlights on, online. Definitely. But, um, yeah, look, ba Barcelona were quite smart, got got him in, performed. He, he'd done well out of it as well. And he probably thought to himself, look, I've, I've won some trophies here. Let me head back to China and, uh, you know, secure myself for the rest of my future. Rest basically. of the future, take that pay packet and yeah. then uh, put his feet up. So so for this one, I think I think definitely a thumbs up for Paulinho. Definitely. I mean, he, he, made, he made a good career choice and, um, yeah, you can't really knock him on nah, that. Nah, it worked out well for him. Worked yeah, out so well thumbs for up for Paulinho. So Peaky, the big names just kept on coming. Uh, <laughs> next up was Hulk. Uh, so in June of 2016, he decided to ditch Zenit St. Petersburg and join up with Shanghai. Um, it was a £46 million fee, and he was earning around about 320k a week, which Ooh, is... Big, you know, that's big money. Big paper, man, <laughs> big paper. Um, look, some of his stats, I think it was about 93 appearances so far and 54 goals for the Chinese club. Um, however, similar to Alex Teixeira, he didn't make that Brazil World Cup squad, and he also didn't make the Copa America. So is this another case of wasted talent, or do you reckon... You know, he's 33 years of age at the moment. Does he still have that talent and ability to possibly still do it in the big clubs in Europe? The thing is, he had the opportunity in the prime of his career, he had the opportunity to do it for mm. the big European clubs. He could have made that step up from um, St. Petersburg to yeah. go to the likes of one of your Real Madrid or a big league, yeah. uh, a, a club in the Premier League. Um, he clearly went for the big money move yeah. over to China. 
the name on the team sheet Hulk that would strike <laughs> fear into any defence. Bro, you... like, there's so many times like, in the Champions League when we used to watch him also, you know, United. Just the guy was a, a beast, you know? Yeah, man. I was like, <laughs> I don't want to play against him, man. He used to smack goals in from 40 yards. He's he's absolute monster on the ball. He could have really kind of, um, you know, given it a good go at one of the big European yeah. clubs, you know, because I know there was clubs who were looking at him at that point uh, in his career at Zenit St. Petersburg mm-hmm. where they thought, you know what, he's ready to make that next step yeah. up. And that came at the time, I think, when the offer came in for mm-hmm. him to move to China. He's obviously living his a nice lifestyle out there playing his football out there mm-hmm. um, and probably enjoying it as well so I don't think we'll ever see him maybe come back this way um, yeah, I think he's he, settled there he's but settled there it's a question of what could have been because I think he could have went down as a, as a real top player I think he could have been top dog I think at yeah. whichever big European club he ended up at I think he would have been top dog and I think the, the main like, man the likes you know him in his prime the likes of Brazil in the World Cup of 2018 if he was playing regular and he was in his prime, I reckon Brazil would have benefited yeah, from that. Yeah, massively, you know. And again, like it, you answer there, what could have been? Mm. Uh, if he was playing regularly at uh, one of the top European clubs and, and playing at that level, I think he almost certainly would have been with the Brazilian national team at the World Cup. And yeah. again, the next question is, what could have been? Um, yeah. But I think on this one, it's got to be a big thumbs down. Has to be, man. You know, he's Has not fulfilled that potential. Mm. Um, he's kind of gone over to China and um, not, not, not pushed himself so big thumbs down no Hulk no Hulk smash here (laughs) (laughs) so Peaky soon after Hulk followed probably one of the biggest transfers to the Chinese I'd say probably the biggest one which (coughs) shocked a lot of people in the in the Premier League as well was Chelsea's Oscar at the age of only 25 uh, he made the move to Shanghai in a deal that was worth around about 60 million pounds um, earning 400 grand a week damn 400k Abs- a week absolutely silly money yeah so December 2016 he made the switch um, big shock to everyone because of his age because of his potential as well dubbed as the next Kaka by many people yeah um, okay stats you know you know for Shanghai but ultimately similar to, to Sharon Hulk didn't make the Brazilian squads for the, the World Cup there's a, bit of a, there's a bit of a trend here if any the, Brazilian <laughs> footballers are watching this and you're yeah. being offered a move to China don't go you won't play for your national team yeah so I mean look like 25 you know there was there was big hype he, he was getting to a point in his Chelsea career where he was kind of reaching that level of okay this is going to be the guy to kind of build a team around yeah um, he's still only 27 years of age now. Do you reckon there's still an opportunity for him to re-enter Europe's top teams? I think there is every opportunity he potentially could. Mm. But I think with the wages he's on, why would he want to? The 400k. 400k. No one's going to pay him that if he comes into Europe now. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame because I know how passionate you are about football players wanting to play football yeah, for I mean, football. <laughs> like, look, end of the day, man, Like he's Brazilian. I'm sure he's looked up to the likes of, like he said, Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Kaka, all these Rivaldo. players. Yeah, all these Brazilian players who are, you know, renowned world best at their time. And, you know, if he's going to go over to China and he's obviously missed out on the Brazilian squads, what's, what does that do for his aims and aspirations as a football player? You know what, I think it, you've got to ask the question to these modern day footballers of, mm. Are they even bothered anymore about playing for their national team? Yeah. Because, like you you said, if it did mean something to them, you'd sacrifice that weekly wage mm. um, and earn something playing at a club where you know you're competing in the best competitions mm. in the league. Yes, you've gone to China to try and kick off the Chinese Super League and whatnot, but let's be real: the level of of that league compared to your, your Serie A mm. or um, Liga or the Premiership is 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 miles apart. You know, mm. so it's unfortunate, Pav, but I think that's the modern day uh, football and the era we're in. Unfortunately, mm. is it's the money power pulling pulling people there. Yeah, I mean, look, man, football's changing and players' ambitions are changing as well. It's more of a money talks nowadays. Def- people say as well, like, you know, like short careers and whatever. Look, it was a short career however many years ago when players used to play as well. Mm. Um, so based on this, I think it's got to be a thumbs down, a waste of a talent, mm. um, you know, going out to China and not pushing his full potential um, at kind of domestic level football to then go and play nationally as well. So... Thumbs yeah, down? Yeah, thumbs down. And it's, again, it's a question of what could have been. Definitely. So, Piki, so weeks after Paulinho signed for Evergrande, yeah. a fellow Brazilian um, La Liga and Serie A winner, uh, Robinho signed as well. Um, it was only a six-month contract he signed for. He made about 11 appearances and only bagged about three goals over there. Yeah. It's a bit of a short stint. Then he moved on, to, uh, moved on to other clubs and ultimately kind of didn't really go anywhere. He never really got back into the Brazil squad. 
his name really didn't you know become relevant again it was a shame you know what that he i i used to enjoy watching him especially in the brazilian national mm. team when he first kind of came on the scene he was like that next exciting yeah, yeah. kind of uh, brazilian superstar like today's kind of neymar who you see you know that was the yeah, kind of comparison yeah. right and when city bagged him on city Transfer, brought him you know what? i was really keen to see yeah. him playing in the he premier had some league great games he, did he had some, some good games, games but then some terrible games and it just yeah. never really clicked for him mm. um towards the end of his kind of career at manchester city he kind of like i think he was ending up on the bench for a lot of the games mm. he won't even making the start in 11 um again went to china on a short deal and you probably thought okay the six month contract is probably just there mm. as a bit of a safety one from the football club uh, who signed him there just to kind of give him a trial see how he kind of gets on mm. um but look again his, his profile at the time he was playing in the brazilian team with the likes of like ronaldinho whose uh, profile was huge at the mm. time and you thought robinho was the next one to kind of you know yeah, compete with him if really you like lived before up that. to the hype did he never did and he kind of just faded away since mm. then and he's kind of just been knocking around from club to club Even since now, i think he's playing in turkey but no one really knows what he's up to Dropped what he's off. doing no, yeah. no, nah, nah. and it's, you know it's such a shame to see because he was definitely in that kind of category of a Brazilian world superstar. You thought he's going to mm. go and be the next, uh, you know, that, that that next player where kids want to have his name on the back of Absolutely, their Brazilian yeah, shirt. Yeah. But unfortunately, um, it kind of didn't work out for him. Mm. So I think we've got to give him a thumbs, thumbs down, down for his for uh, his short stint in the Chinese Super League. Definitely. Okay, so Piki, moving on to the next one, another high-profile Brazilian who, at the time, had just won the Premier League and the Champions League, yeah. as Chelsea's Ramirez. So in the year 2016, he moved to uh, Jiangsu Suning. Um, so just to quickly roll through how he kind of performed there, um, it was for a fee of £25 million, pounds, yeah. uh, earning approximately £200,000 a week, which at the time was you know pretty pretty good money. Decent money. Um, three seasons in total but then eventually got released from his contract in May of actually this year yeah um he's now back in Brazil playing for Palmeiras um so look he, he kind of won the Champions League and the Premier League two of the biggest things you can win in football do you think that right then at the time of the move was optimum time for him to go I think so I think when you looked at that Chelsea team that he was a part of obviously yeah. the last game they'd won the Champions League um Di Matteo was a caretaker manager at the time he wasn't offered like a the full-time role so he was probably thinking to himself look I've just won uh probably the biggest honor you can at club level with the with the Champions League mm. um obviously you know with Chelsea uh Drogba I think was finishing his that was his last game as well yeah. for the football club there was a lot of players aging in that team as well so he thought you know what I've, I've kind of domestically and, and, and you know what you done do. what I could yeah. it's time for me to get out um, so fair play to him Look, like mm. he kind of won his things at Chelsea got got them as far as they could mm. uh, and he felt you know what it's time for me to take a nice payday and uh, yeah. head out and experience the Chinese Super League so I think it's got to be a thumbs up from me thumbs up for thumbs Ramirez, up for Ramirez. Yeah. Okay, so Piki, one of the most shocking transfers to the Chinese Super League has to be Alex Teixeira yeah. um, it was in January 2016 it's kind of nailed on for him to join Liverpool. Liverpool made a bid for about, I think it's about £25 million yeah, from at the, the time, table. yeah, to distract her. Um, however, he chose to move to Jiangsu Suning um, for what was at the time a record fee of £42.5 million uh, transfer, you know, to, to the Chinese league. Um, he was earning approximately 210k, which was on the table on the offer. Um, he's still playing there now. He's got a pretty, pretty decent goals tally. However, he has missed out on the 2018 Brazilian World Cup squad and also the most recent Copper America. So would you say go down the route of a bit of a wasted talent on I was this just, one? As soon as you obviously mentioned you didn't make the Brazilian squads, I was just about to say, Pav, I've got to stop you there. Yeah. Look, that sums it all up for me. Um, mm. He had an offer on the table to come and play in the best league in the world, in the Premier League, and really make a name for himself. And look, it's not with a, a kind of Mickey Mouse club either. It's Liverpool, mm. Liverpool obviously a big, 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 yeah. big brand, big club. Um so you look, he kind of missed on the opportunity to come and better himself as a player. He's gone out and played in China um, and he hasn't made his national teams for major yeah. tournaments. And surely as a footballer, uh, that thing that drives you on is that ambition mm -hmm. of wanting to represent your national team to play at the very best level you can. He was hyped up for a while, man. They thought, you know, he yeah. was like, when he was at the, that kind of prime, there yeah. was a lot of people kind of watching him and uh, thinking he was going to come and set the Premier League alight if he kind of signed for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, this is a massive thumbs down. As a footballer, mm -hmm. you've got to go and play at the best possible level you can. Um, He's an to He took, to do he took that. the money at the end of the day, didn't he? Hundred percent. So yeah. uh, you look. We know he's got to earn a living out of it, but at the end of the day, you've got to challenge so that, yourself. That sort of move is still. He was still young at the time. Yeah, so definitely. Let's say he came to Liverpool, gave it two, three years, built a name, and then he wanted to make the move. It's still, the move was still that beyond. final payout. You know, at the end yeah. of his career, 30, 30 plus sort of thing. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, Alex Teixeira is a big uh, thumbs down from myself. Thumbs and down, and it's a shame to see some talent go to waste. Definitely. 
So, Pav, that's been the seven high-profile Brazilian footballers that we've covered in today's show. Mm -hmm. um, been quite interesting to see how they've got on so far. Yeah, very interesting. And like you said earlier, this Chinese Super League revolution, don't see it slowing down anytime soon. So I would say expect even bigger names to make the switch and even bigger transfer fees. Uh, give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to jump into the comment section uh, to let us know if you agree or disagree mm. uh, with the decisions that Pav and myself made.